Welcome back. Elections beyond presidential race. The presidential elections in Nigeria often receive the most attention due to the high profile nature of the role and its significant impact that the president has on the country's politics and policies. However, it is important to also pay attention to the state and national assembly elections as they also play a crucial role in shaping the country's political landscape and determining the direction of policy making. These elections have the potential to bring new leaders and ideas to the forefront. And it is important to ensure that all levels of government are held accountable to the people they serve. Neglecting to pay attention to other categories of elections, such as states, and national assembly elections can lead to a lack of accountability for elected leaders. If the focus is solely on the presidential election, there will be less scrutiny of other elected officials, which can lead to a lack of oversight and a lack of checks and balances in government. This can create an environment where leaders may be less motivated to act in the best interest of their constituents and may be more inclined to engage in corrupt or incompetent behavior. It's important for citizens to be informed and engaged with the electoral process at all levels of government to ensure that the elected leaders are held accountable for their actions. So I beseech you, as we approach these 2023 elections, let us pay attention beyond the presidential election to other races such as those for the Senate, as of representatives and the state governors, as they also have a significant impact on the direction of politics of the country. Well, advocates, it is good that we are having this rave, this attention that the youth are giving to this election, the awareness. It is good, but if you take a look around, you will see that discussions only center around the presidential race. And it is important that we pay as much attention to what happens in our state and local governments. So you see that the presidential election takes the greater high attention, but when you get to states, it lowers. But and by the time it gets to local government level the attention dwindles to the barest minimum. And I think that is the reason why we are here. What do you think, guys? Elijah? Well, you said it all. No, even if you have a good president, it's true that the president, the box stops in the stable. He has to do more of the job. He has to influence, he has to lead, give a direction. But, you know, there are certain laws or certain policies that you cannot or certain procedures, governance procedures, that he cannot just execute without passing through other tiers of government. So every tier of government is important. We have to try as much as possible as we are trying to vote in a credible candidate for the president. You also look at credible candidates, look at their profiles and their manifestos, what are they offering, what are they, their personality, their achievement in past, and uh, who they are, basically their intents or purpose and all those things from the presidency to the house of representatives to the senate to local governor state of house of assembly down to the local government even councillors so we have to do that we have to pay detailed attention to these things because they are important uh, but um the, the thing is for what i just know 2023 election um I'm, I'm very glad and happy that the awareness is more now we are tired of poor leadership we want to take back our nation but it should not just beyond the, it should not, we should go beyond the mere, um, should I say, euphoria of the moment of, oh, let's, we are working. Go ahead, go out there, vote. Take time to understand these people, who they are, listen to them. I've been paying attention to um, many political candidates and what they see. So let's just keep paying attention to them and see what we can get from them and then make our decision. 
Victor. Victor, one of the factors that people have said that a particular candidate in this coming election might not win is that uh, they are looking at how many other positions mm. at the National Assembly, the, the state, and then does he have or does the party has as a whole that would make him be able to achieve on the manifesto that he has brought forward. Uh, so do you think by just paying attention to just the presidential candidates of such party will be enough for us to, uh, to see the manifesto uh, come to bear? when he wins the election. Yeah, I think it's um, very, very important. And it's important to underscore it. I mean, here we call a spade a spade, right? So, I mean, you're talking about Peter Obi. And when you look at it, right, um, the, the Labour Party, um, APC is currently um, the government in administration, right? And it's not like there are APC elected officials all over the, you know, the federation, you know, at the national level. So the idea is that there has to be a lot of cohabitation, and which is why it's important to underscore unity, harmony, and peace, regardless of whether you are for Labour Party, you are for, you know, PDP, APC, APGA, whatever it is. There just has to be a, a harmonification because, you know, I mean, if Peter Obi becomes president, right? Or if Tinimbo or Kwankwa, so anybody, right? They are not essentially going to, um, if I'm going to invent a word, partify the entire, you know, official um, um, positions with their own party. It doesn't work like that, right? So in Lagos, for instance, you know the party that is quite the strongest. And it's funny that, you know, some parties are at the Senate level, some parties are doing poorly. When you come to some local government, let's say in some remote village, they are doing so. When you're wondering, is this the same party that is evil? And so it, parties are not evil. There's nothing like party being evil. It is people, right? It is people. And that's why you see somebody leaving APC. I mean, we, we saw it in this country, jump shipping from APC to PDP. And we've seen a lot of recycling. So if we go by party, we're going to judge wrongly. I think it's about people. And I agree with you. When we begin to look away from the fact that, you know, of course, the, pres the office of the president is like the office of the CEO in a company. Mm. You know, so everybody looks at the CEO to provide direction, to tell us where the business is going and all of those things. Nobody thinks about the security. Nobody thinks about the janitor. But guess what? You might be shocked that the janitor has the secret key to the next level of growth in that company just by watching people come in and go out, you know. So it's also important that um, as young people, right, it's, it's very key that we begin to also um, get involved at the grassroots level. So a lot of mobilization. Like I think I've said that on, on The Advocate several times that we need to um, start learning about what's going on in our local government. If you're in Kosher Fair, you are in mainland, you are in anywhere you are, right? So you need to understand what's happening there. You need to get involved. Or oh, who is our local government chairman? Or oh, what are the things he said he's going to do? Whether it's APC, PDP, Labour, it doesn't matter. Who is the person? What are the initiatives? How can I get involved? When are their meetings? How can I attend? So that I can say, oh, I've attended four meetings in this month, and I can say this is where we are at the local government level. And because of that, we focus on the bigger picture, the bigger demon, the bigger devil, and we ignore the lesser evils, right, which is very important. I'm going to un un underscore something here, you know, just to wrap up. You know, when we say that um, um, we focus on the bad politicians, the politicians who, you know, um, uh, we, we focus on things like maybe arm robbery, all the smaller vices happening, arm robbery, kidnapping, ritualism. These are evils. These are societal menaces, right? But guess what? L let's look at it this way. When the, when the airplane crashed, like the Sosoliso days and things like that, you know, let's say an airplane carries about, let's say, um, maybe max, give or take, 100 people. Let's say if a plane crashes because of under maintenance and poor maintenance culture, right? Let's say we lose 100 people. Now think about a politician who withholds allocated funds to fix bad roads. And think about it that there are some roads that when you look at the count, it takes close to 10,000 people die on those bad roads every year. 
Now we look at, oh, um, the armed robbery, the kidnappers, and all of those um, evils that look very pronounced. Mm. And we forget that the bigger evil is a politician who is sitting on, you know, the public funds. And as a result of that, indirectly killing people. Now, he's not using gun to kill people, but by withdrawing, withholding those funds, they're also murdering people. So we need to also look at it from, let's not focus on the bigger, you know, the bigger things we can see, the presidency, like you said. So I agree. We also need to look at the grassroots level. Lots of things are happening there. And the next president, guess what, is coming from that. From that. Very instructive. Well, Very instructive. So let's go to Suleiman. Uh, Suleiman, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Well, good afternoon, advocate. Yeah, Suleiman, uh, I think we are all in agreement that it's a good thing that the youths are really uh, enthusiastic about this coming election. But where we think we are not doing well is not focusing on some other areas uh, like the representatives from our uh, different constituencies who will in turn. Uh, fight against a particular policy if it's not uh, in favor of their own personal uh, personal goals. What do you, what do you, what's your take on this? So just as uh, you've, um, other advocates have, uh, have said, um, the president alone does not make the government. The type of democracy we practice in this part of the world requires that all other arms of government really from what, uh, what is government. And this has always been my point, just like other advocates have also said, that um, we must make sure that we don't just look at the president alone. It is true, the book ends on his, uh, the president desk, but democracy is beyond that. The president alone does not run everything. So we must also look, who are those who are sending, sending to the House of Rep, who are those who are sending to the Senate? Because they complement the effort of the president in this type of um, uh, democracy we run in this part of the world. So it is high time. And you can see the robust thing is that both of these elections are even tied together. That is the presidential, the Senate, and the House of Red. It happens on the same day. The simple um, implication is this. That is, in most of the parties, actually the awareness is very, just like Felix said, that the awareness now is on the high side. People are now aware of what they need to do. But in most cases, the destiny of the president and the senator and the House of Rep are always tied together. In most cases, they either sink or swim together. So it's high time we start also looking at other, uh, other people who elect in other positions, not just only the president. Thank you, Simon. I, I think my takeaway from all of the things that we have said here is that uh, we have realized that beyond voting, the youth also need to get more involved, even from the political primaries to the, the before we get to the general elections, so that we can al always, I mean, speak and interrogate every other areas that we need to before we get the final candidates uh, given to us by each of the parties that we have in Nigeria. Sulaiman Akonde is next after the break.